Hey everyone and welcome to a new podcast by the Boys and God team. Yes, we've got something brand new for you guys and it's called Big Team Talks. Now, this Let's is go. where myself, John, Kenji and other footballers will come on and talk about current events in football and also trending topics and big subjects within the world of football, giving you a perspective of not just footballers, but also Christian footballers and brothers in Christ as well. And also a bit of fan opinion as well in there from myself and from our perspective. We're looking for a good debate, good chat and good direction in how we move forward in this world of football. I am joined by once again by the wonderful John Bostock, who we're going to be talking about quite a bit today because he is a champion. You know what I'm saying? He is coming here winning the playoffs uh, for the National League. And then also the man, the one and only Kenji Gare as well is here with us today. Um, guys, I'll come to Kenji first. How are you doing, Kenji? How are you doing? Ah, oh, all the better by seeing you, KJ, man. <laughs> that was one of that was one of the that was one of the statements that one one brother said in uh, in Swansea. All the better by seeing you, Kenji. And I was like, I'm taking that with me, man. <laughs> but it's a privilege, man. It's a privilege and honor to be here today. Uh, come on now, come on now. Obviously, we just have to. You know what? We have to just, Kenji. We need to clap. We need to give him the, the all of the praise he deserves. You know what I'm saying? Not only is he is a not only is he is he a great father, not only is he a, is a man of God, but he's a leader on the football pitch as well. Uh, mm. For you that don't know, John uh, and his team, Notts County, won the playoffs to get back into the football league. Uh, something that means so much to the Notts County fans and the area as well. And uh, John put in, he put in a masterclass, people. Let's not get it twisted. Uh, he put in a great, <laughs> great performance. And um, yeah, he achieved he achieved the goal, scoring a beautiful, beautiful free kick as well. Uh, not to mention, not to forget that. So we just want to give you up to John and say congratulations. Um, we all all support him, we're all watching. And uh, yeah, um, today's topic is about victory. Um, John winning the uh, the playoff final. We just seen Manchester City be crowned uh, champions of the Premier League for the third time in a row, and I think it'll be a good. It's a good time to talk about victory and glory and how as as Christians do we handle that, and especially in football where that is the goal and that is the aim. How how does one deal with that going forward? But first of all, we got to talk, to John. How did it feel? winning the playoff, going to Wembley, winning that game in such a dramatic style as well? It was an emotional day. Not only like was it was the occasion of playing at Wembley so emotional, but if you guys had followed Notts County at all this season, I'm not sure if you guys have, but it was an incredible season. We broke all sorts of records, uh, point, uh, point, uh, points tally record, goal scored record, um, possessions rec uh, pos uh, possession stats record. Um, least goals conceded record like we literally like broke all the records that stood in Notts County's history and it's, it's it's the oldest club in in uh in 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 world football you know Notts County so these records have stood for for for, for you know almost 200 years um or 150 years and and we broke them this year only to be pipped by Wrexham you know like we finished the season with 106 points and we still didn't go up automatically. Our, our top goal scorers scored 41 goals, no penalties, and we still had to go up by the playoffs. So, like, it, the way we play under our manager, who's the most amazing manager I've ever played under, we dominate the game. Like, we dominate games. And if a team beats us, which I think we lost twice or maybe three times in the season, it's, it's like the most lucky goal or just something crazy has to happen in the game. So, normally, we just deal with teams. Um... And they're very, very lucky to get a draw. Come to the playoffs, we had two games, the semi and the final. Out of 240 minutes, which were, you know, two games and the extra time, we were ahead for two minutes out of 240 minutes. So it was the most emotional roller coaster where in the semis, we went 2-0 down and I made an error before halftime. I, I kind of gave my centre-back a hospital pass and he lost it. And then the guy went through and scored. I was thinking, Lord, 
where are you? <laughs> <laughs> but I've known, I know enough to just to keep going, just to keep mm -hmm. on believing and to keep pressing. And in that game, we scored early in the uh, in the second half, but we equalised in the ninety seventh minute. Jody Jones mm -hmm. scored in the ninety, so the seventh minute of added time, and then we scored the winner in the last minute of extra time, the hundred and twenty first minute. So that was really draining and emotional. And then we went to Wembley, and we went one nil behind in the first ten minutes, and we're thinking, boy, this is going to be a long, long, long day. Wow. But we, after some nerves, and the team, you know, had a bit of jitters we got the rhythm and um we got i mean i scored the equalizer in 88th minute and it was, it was it was an incredible day i had family there um in london and i played against chesterfield um in wembley at wembley in, in when i was 21 years old on loan at swindon and i lost and so to come back at 31 and to help my team you know do it you know the bible says that your latter shall be greater than your former and that's a scripture that people here, if you listen to this, you should hold on to that because that's what the word says. And if you believe it and stand on it, your latter, like what your, 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 the ending of a matter should be greater than the start. And I, I believe that in my career, I believe that for your career, Kenji, and your career, KJ, and anyone listening to this, your best days are ahead of you. So to beat Chesterfield the way we did in dramatic fashion and to help my team the way I did, um, even though I missed a penalty, let's not speak about that yet. Uh, it was an incredible day and just a real, a real, a real wonderful end to the season because I started this season without a club for four months. I was training by myself um, and I went from literally training on parks to stay fit to ending it on the, you know, the home of football Wembley. So God really is faithful and he gets all the glory. Amen. Amen. I mean, you, can, you see how you just glossed over the free kick? Just like, oh, yeah, let's go the last minute free kick. No, let's reel it back. Let's go. John, that free kick, I don't even remember how far out it was. Do you remember? I don't know how far I was. But all I saw is <laughs> there's no way my man's hitting it for here. And and you go and do it near post as well. Like, what was going through your mind like during that moment? Like, Was that a planned thing? Was that something you thought about doing from before? Do you know what? So... I've realized something, yeah. God, he moves on our faith. Yeah. And my friend once told me, he said that, he said that um, breakthrough um, and faith operates like a revolving door. Have you been to a nice hotel? And you, and you know the thing that revolving door, it only moves yeah. once you get close to it. If you stay 10 meters away, it doesn't move. But as you come close to it, it starts to rotate and you can walk through. And I've, I've come to learn, that's how the Lord works with certain things. And so you can believe to score a goal, but it's the faith. It, the faith's a doing word. So when you operate in faith, I believe that God comes on top of that faith or operates through that faith. And that's where you see exploits. And so this free kick, picture it. We've got three minutes left to save our season. Otherwise, Chesterfield, they're wheeling away, celebrating. And we go into our summer break, go back to our families after the game, miserable, having to rebuild for next year. Probably having lose and lost loads of players because they should be at a higher level. And I get this free kick in this position. And my goalkeeper coach, he he said to me pr pr uh, pr uh, prior to the game, he said, John, this keeper, he likes to gamble. Mm -hmm. So if you see him off his line, try hit the near post wherever you are. I was thinking, boy, we've not got any free kicks all game. And I finally got a free kick now. And I said to my teammate, I saw, just saw a little, little, little alley just to kind of bend it around the wall and to, you know, hit that space. And if you watch the video from a certain angle, I said to my teammate, Matty Palmer, I said, I said, Matty, I'm going to shoot. He went, all right. Because nothing else was working for us in that game. Like We were trying, knocking on the door, mm. nothing would open. Mm. And um, when I watch it back now, it's like a movie. Like, it's like a movie. Um, and I hadn't scored for many years leading up to this season. To score against Wrexham, the free kick against Ben Foster, yeah. to score in the final. Like, I can't thank God enough. And of course, I executed it. But it was like... Honestly, that, there was like an anointing on that ball. And so the reason I said about the revolving yeah. doors is because you can believe for something, but until you take that step of faith, if I had never shot, although I'm a Christian, I believe God, if I had never shot, we might not be talk, having this conversation now. Mm, so, yeah. but the feeling, boy, as soon as that went in, pandemonium, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> because as soon as that went, I thought, right, we're going to win now. We're going to win. Mm. I'm, I'm going to help my team and we're going to win. And you could see the, as happy as we were, Chesterfield, our opposition, they were deflated. I was like, yeah, take that. <laughs> <laughs>
and uh, and I was and I was able and I was able to do you know John, yo, the, listen, the, Johnson, hold that, you know, hold yeah, that. Hold that. And I was able, honestly, like I said to so the day before I prayed, I was like, Lord, tomorrow's a big stage. Wembley is, I mean, forty thousand people for the fifth division in England is crazy. We broke the record for the biggest attendance in non-league history. Like, Lord, can your name be glorified tomorrow? I don't, I don't know what will happen, but would your name somehow be lifted up? And I scored that goal. And I remember running to our fans and I, I did ask the ballers and got celebration. You know, Jesus loves you in sign language. Wow. The hand, hand, loves. And all these, when you watch it back, you can see me telling all these people, although they're jumping for me, I'm telling like, Jesus loves you. And ultimately, like, we got the victory, but God gets the glory, you know. Amen. John, honestly, it's it's so amazing to hear. It's so amazing to hear. Like I was sat on my sofa, jumping up and down. Me and my wife <laughs> sat there watching it. Like we were so happy because it was an emotional game. Like we were like, oh my, something has to happen. Something out of nowhere has to happen. Like nothing was working really. That wasn't really getting any shots off. And I was thinking like, oh, something magical has to happen. Then the free kick came and I was like, okay, this is the moment. Is this the moment? So I stood up and got my phone out got my phone out, started to record, and me and Bella were like, is this going to be it? And then when it went near post, my phone went in the air. My phone went in the air. We were <laughs> gaff, man. We were so happy for you, John. And it was like, it was so emotional. And uh, we messaged in the group up straight away, and we could just imagine um, how how Sia, your, how your wife was reacting through it. And we could just um, feel that all that emotion from you as well, doing the celebration, Jesus loves you. Like, it was just so emotional. It was just so beautiful. But what I found so amazing, John, is how calm and collective you actually were through that whole game. You were so composed. Um, you, you stood out um, out of everyone. I thought that you were the best um, on that pitch. And this isn't just to say that because you're my brother and my friend. Like This was like, what I saw. Um, you playing um, and and just after the game as well how how composed you were as well just it was just so amazing to see um, Christ really shine through you in that moment as well so I just wanted to share that um, right now as well as we're just here in this place like amazing John amazing thank you bro that that really means a lot and I um like 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 you know uh, Kenji like going into big games there's like a lot of emotion like a lot of pressure because there is pressure like you know a club's future like weighs yeah. in the balance and I and the day before I was feeling so responsible I was like Lord this we have to do this mm. and then the Lord reminded me like like let go like let go and you know the the, the word of God says um if anyone would see if anyone would save his life he will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake he'll find it. So when we hold things that we really desire and we, we're able to let go a little bit, we can actually find freedom in the midst of chaos that the world can't quite fathom. And that's why Jesus mm -hmm. said, he says, my peace I live with you, my peace I leave of you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives peace do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So we are actually supposed to be different to the world in high pressure moments, hard moments, difficult moments because we have a piece that doesn't come from our environment. And I think mm -hmm. maybe you could possibly watch that in, in the game of my performance, where others maybe are looking for looking in themselves for solutions. I was like looking to him for solutions. And I think that that showed itself. But I also must say this, that it's not me, because there's been many times in my career where there's been big moments and I haven't been like that. Do you know what I mean? I, I haven't. Mm. But over the journey and like through the process god's brought me to a place now where I'm, I'm i'm more secure in him than i used to be so you know even if we lost that game i would have really 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 been gutted i i i my joy in christ by the grace of god would have would have remained the same you know amen no, i hear that no, I hear that. no. honestly it was it, it's beautiful to hear you say these things after you've you've gone through that because we never really get to hear how footballers feel besides the the, the cliche answers of oh yeah i play good and we made them feelings and all that so yeah, yeah. thanks for sharing that and uh, i remember uh, i was actually i was actually on stream uh with work uh covering i think man united and another game and i was literally just watching the screen and you see me do like this because um one of your your players scored the equalizer and you just see me going mad and people thought it was for the Sunderland game because Ahmad plays for Ahmad Yala plays for Sunderland. Sure, and I was like, no, 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 I'm not watching. I was like, I'm watching not County. Come on, you know what I mean? So yeah, no, it was a, I love that. Absolutely love that game. Amazing game. An amazing season as well. Congratulations. And 
as you were talking there, it, 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 it made me think about like, like you said, like it's not you, it's God, uh, God within you, God needs you to do this thing. So like, when you've you've won now, when players win, you get that you get that you get that victory, you get a sense of achievement, you get all the accolades like like we did for you earlier, and what the press will say and what your family will say. And as footballers, how do you handle that? How do you handle the victory, the achievement, and everything that comes with it? You're asking me, or is that open to to Kenji? Yeah, uh, it's open to Kenji as well. Like it's both of you. Because both of you have had victory in some way. So yeah. No, I think for me personally, um, I think for me personally, like it's been, it's been a journey, Mm. you know, it's been such a journey, like how I used to think and how I think now is completely different. You know, there was a definitely a time in my career where um, I thought, you know, winning was, was the only thing, you know, like I had to win and I would act a certain way if I won and I would act a different way if I lost. And in my, in my, where I'm at right now, it gets to a point where, you know, we're living in victory. So if you mm, lose, you're also wow. a winner. And I've really, sh- like, I've really got to a place now where I'm always trying to find the victory. Like, where is the victory in this? Where is the win in this? Like, where can I see the, like, and that's why there's certain times where we might have lost in a game, but you'll see me go and encourage someone on the opposite team or encourage someone on my team where I've seen something in them where they've done something well. And I feel like I'm spirit led in that way to do that. And that's where I see like, it's so much bigger than the actual game. It's so much bigger than the actual moment um, that we're actually called for so much bigger and greater things. So I've kind of got to a point in my career and in my life that we're we're already winners. We're already victorious, you know? Mm. So that's so kind powerful, of how I bro. handle it. There's, there, there's, there's a reality that we have as believers is that we don't actually play. We don't live to be victorious. We live from victory. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't chase victory. We live from a place of being already victorious. Because once you come to the understanding of who you are in Jesus Christ, even if you fail mm. in the eyes of the world, you still realize actually I, I can still be actually I am, you know, living for the audience of one, and I can be a success in the eyes of of Christ. And I think that. Um, it like K- Kenji said, it comes. You have to go through the process. You have to mm. be able to suffer defeat, take defeat well. You have to be a, able to go through victories and go through victories well. But I also have come to realize that I've learned more through defeat, and cl- uh, have had to cling on more to Jesus through defeat than in victory. Yeah. And what victory does, victory um it can almost make you take your foot off the gas. Sometimes mm-hmm. I've realized that in my own life, when I've seen victory, whether that's in ballers in God, whether that's seeing souls saved, whether it's in my family, whether it's in finances or in football, it's like victory, what it does to you goes, ah, you can, you can rest now, ah, you've done it, yeah. you can chill. Mm-hmm. Or I've even seen I've even seen Christians, if they've gone to a good conference, yeah, or a good, they've, had, they've, they've listened to a good sermon on a Sunday, <sighs> Or they then go, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm nice now. I'm cool. And they can yeah. not pray or not read the word for a, f- a week or a few days. And before you know it, like you're not where you were on Sunday. And so victory, although it, it's nice and it's sweet and we desire it, we have to remember that God's greatest desire for us is to become like Jesus. And sometimes the best way for him to make you like Jesus is through learning through things like defeat. Yeah. Like the Bible says Jesus learned obedience through suffering. That is a verse that you don't often hear preached in church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to Christ today, you will learn obedience through suffering. Nah, we don't ever hear it. <laughs> You know what I mean? We hear, yeah, you'll come to Christ and he'll, he'll change your life. And it's true. Mm. But the word says he learned obedience through suffering. And it's hard, K- uh, KJ, for footballers mm. to, to, to marry the word of God and the world of football. Because mm-hmm. they, they aren't, like in cohesion do you know what yeah. i mean so like you you could be out of the team and you know even injured and i'm not saying god god ever injures us because i don't believe that but you could be in the rehab room and you're not in the newspapers for any performances or the fans aren't charting your name and everyone's like Why, where is he but you could be doing the work of an evangelist the work of christ in a hidden place that god's like you know what that there that has eternal rewards so 
I think I think it's like to talk on a deeper level of faith. Like I'm so passionate about doing well in football, and I, I'm so grateful that my team's gone up. But you see all these results, the people want to forget about it next year. Mm-hmm. So I mean, people forget about the year after. You know, look back to Arsenal Invincibles teams. They keep talking about it, but it's gone now. Like it's they want results now. And I and the rest of the ballers and God, like Kenji, like we are trying to fix our, our focus on eternal rewards. Mm-hmm. So, but honestly, like dealing with um, success is, uh, is as difficult sometimes as dealing with failures. Mm. So true, man. I just want to add on that as well. Like, you know, when I also got to a point where when you win and you know the reasons why you actually won, and the hard work, the effort, true, the, the dedication, the sacrifice, the prayer, the fasting, everything just gets amplified. And then you're like, this has just happened through all of that. It's like mm. that that feeling there is undescribable. Yeah, when I scored that goal against passers, like there's 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 a feeling that you get, there's a there's a there's something that happens like spiritually and energetic mm. inside of you that you're like, wow, like. You can't describe it. And that comes from all the things that I just shared. Like it comes from that. And that's the victory. You know, all of that is the victory. So so that I just wanted to add that on what you just beautifully shared there as well, John. Thanks, bro. So good. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing that because I think sometimes in our own lives, it's for someone who's not a footballer, it's kind of like my victory is from you guys, like from my team achieving things, then therefore mm-hmm. I achieve. Um, and I understand that feeling as being a fan, but at the same time, I realized that actually, no, because there's 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 goals and there's victories within my own life that I can achieve that you can't achieve, and it's not about necessarily saying your success is greater than mine, but actually, or our success further enhances the kingdom, and that's all the thing that matters. And and I think when you come from a place of from a place of the victory is not even mine. Like it is, but it's mm. ultimately the Lord's. I think you can handle it better because then it's like, you don't have this weight of, I wouldn't say pressure, but this, this massive weight of, of glory on your shoulders. And how do you deal with it? It's actually, no, here's the glory, Lord. I'll take my piece <laughs> that, that I enjoy, but then we go again because there's more and more to be done. So so yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's really encouraging to, to hear that you guys do that. And on, on redirecting glory to God, how how do you guys as football as Christian footballers because that's the difference between you and 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 most of the footballing world that you have Christ. How do you guys di- redirect this this glory that you guys get from winning to to God? How do you how do you pull it onto Him? You know, what? I was thinking about this question because um, I've been asked it before. Like, how do we give glory to God? Mm-hmm. And I've seen people think that it's a it's a public thing. Like I have to have a Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus Lord T-shirt under my top, or I have to raise my hands to the sky, or I have to, you know, uh, do something that people see that I'm glorifying God. But I've come to realize that the real depth of actually glorifying God through what what we do or through victory is it, it's 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 redirecting all the praise that you've received and giving it back to Him, even when no one sees that. So I had the opportunity after the game; they interviewed me and asked me. And um, I said it in the in the interview. I said like I I have to give I have to give God the, Jesus Christ all the glory for this, and um. But I've I, there's also a temptation where athletes say that, but in 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 their heart that's not where they're at. So I remember after the game, I was like celebrating with family, and I was I was on a high, you know. And I remember I found myself alone, I think, on the bus because all the boys were upstairs drinking. I don't drink. And my family would meet me back at the hotel. So I didn't really have anyone to go and say hello to upstairs. And so I got on the bus. I showered the ice bath, got on, got, on the, got on the bus. I was just sitting there and I just took a moment. I was like, Lord, like, you did it. You know, Lord, you had a goal this season. Like, we had a goal. And this is, I said, like, Lord, thank you. Like, this is, like, I give it back to you. And and even since then, like, just in conversation, I, I just talked to my wife and my mother-in-law like can you believe he did I was like yeah God 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 he's so faithful he really is Mm. and so I think uh yeah I mean that's that's how I would answer the question KJ like it's not always an overtly outside thing oh hey that guy's glorifying God it's the inward working of the heart where we realize that 
if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even have the gift to play football. So all that I've received, Lord, I give it back to you, you know. So that's what I'd say on that. Powerful, man. You, you said it all, man. You said it all. Powerful, bro. Yeah, I've never oh. really, I don't really thought about it in that way before. Because I think I'm so, we're so used to seeing athletes, celebrities, like do their outward public um, decoration, which obviously we all, we we all love to see um, and, it's, and it's great. But, but then you get to a place of, you could think, oh, that's the only way to do it. Um, or, yeah, good and, point. And, mm. and that's not the case. And you showing it there, it just makes me reflect on like, there's been, I understand because there's been times like that where you sit back and reflect, and actually, Lord, like, look where we are, look where what yeah. we achieved. Like, thank you so much for doing that. And I think many people won't see that as actually redirecting glory to God. They'll just see it as them talking to God. But in that, you're honoring Him, even within those actions. And not all the time is it go on stage, thank you for this award. And obviously, I just want to thank Jesus Christ. Did it? Like, we we want that, but in the like you say, in the heart. Is that where mm-hmm. your heart is at? Because if you say it and your heart's not in it, 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 it doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean anything at all. So yeah, like th- that's so intriguing to hear. And I'm definitely going to sit on that one because it's yeah, kind of like, a heart thing. The, 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 it's a heart position, you know? It's a heart position that that if you don't, if you don't realize you'll miss it, you know? You'll, you'll miss that opportunity to do so. So, so yeah, man, that is... That was beautifully, and the way you you said that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, I think Kenji, thank you. You disagree in it, like you're just. <laughs> Listen, that I just want to um, share this verse because it's so important. I, I really love the love the fact we have a follow in here and they listen to us, and it's wonderful. But the word of God really is sharper than a double edged sword, and that's 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 really got the you know the potency to change people's lives. And and Jesus said this. He said, "These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far yes. from me," and like. There is a temptation at footballers, and I, look, I was on Instagram the other day, and I saw this post from this account, and the, it was a TikTok video or like a reel, yeah. And they said Christian footballers part one, and they put this like worldly song behind it. Then they put like different Christian footballers around the world who, and they were all like A star players, mm-hmm. and um, and the reason this guy picked them is because maybe they do, you know, they cross themselves before they go on a pitch or they do this when they score. Mm. And I know firsthand that the guys, the majority of those guys in that list, they're not born again. And then this is not to, to, to judge them or put anything on them because I pray that they all come to know Jesus. But just by the fruit, you can see that they're not where, you know, they're not walking in Christ or in the light. And so the world, remember the Bible says the world looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the hidden man of the heart, the in like the, the heart. Yeah. And it's really hard to um, remember this because we want to show everyone how... Listen, I've been there in church here where I'm trying to worship loud so everyone can see, oh, that guy's holy. I've been there. I've done that. Do you know what I mean? Wow, you, yeah. you're, you're, you was on fire yeah. today in worship. Yeah, yeah man. When actually, you when actually... Up, you just stretch yours just a little no, bit No, bro, more, listen, bro. not just... I'm jumping, I'm doing... I can't back to it, but I'm literally like... Do you know what I mean? Like how Kenji used to be in the raves back in the day. That was me in church. <laughs> The doggy, the doggy. <laughs> well, I was dugging in church, you know. Oh my! <laughs> but so, so there was times as a younger Christian where I would be worshiping in such a way, but my mind was, "Are people? Are people watching me right now?" Mm. And guess what? That's not worship. That's that. That is a performance. Yeah. But worship can sometimes be you just in the corner, and your heart and your mind is fixed on God, and only God sees that only god sees that so i mean this is an encouragement to anyone watching this if your heart's in the right place it's okay if it's only the lord that sees it do you know why because the bible says that if people if people give you accolade for what you're doing that's your reward you won't have anything else after that but if you do things to the glory of god that no one else sees the bible says that you're storing up treasures that will that won't rust you know so the other man the heart is key so good man mm, no, wow no. True, man. True. And talking about like y- your heart, like in in that moment, someone you've just won, but someone has to lose for you to get there. So someone on the opposite side is is feeling the kind of way. And I'm just wondering, how do you how do you go about about acting around them? Maybe not uh, during the celebrations, but maybe if you've seen them, it cost them in the changing rooms or in the, in the hallways. 
Um, how do you go about acting around opponents who have who maybe lost for your gain? Uh, yeah, you say unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> you have to pray more, man. God, man. We prayed more than you. Wait, get your prayers. Oh, up, John. Man. You need to get born again, bro. You, you lost because you're not Christians. No, I'm only messing. Go on, Kenji. Nah, you, no, got, you, you killed me here, bro. That, you know you finished me. I was going to come with something serious then as well. I know. Sorry, bro. <laughs> oh that's amazing um no honestly i think i think it's respect like for me like i just focus on the respect side where it's like i've they've just also put in the hard work the same way we like, have like they've all, also all done the same like they've done they've, they've they've done the exact same as us you know the extra training the set pieces after training that no one likes you know all of these things like that 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 you're sacri- <laughs> You know, then when you're standing there freezing, oh, that's got to be the worst part one. of football, isn't it? That has to be the worst <sighs> part of football. Set pieces, every and in our team, bro, you got to do it serious, man. It's long. You hey, like, I'm telling you, each other in that. the worst <sighs> part of football is defending set pieces in training. Oh, oh my I god, your foot imagine, imagine, elbows. imagine that as well. And you're not playing, oh, bro, you got to do it serious. <laughs> You know some players they try to prove to the gaffer that they should play by the way they defend set pieces. <laughs> gaffer, look at me. I'm getting touch tight. Oh my gosh. I just scored. <laughs> I'm celebrating the header that you just scored in the front. <laughs> uh, and especially oh, when you come up against man. a young player yeah, who's trying to show the gaffer that he's like he should be involved. And he is attacking <laughs> the ball like it's like it's like it's his last free Wait, kick you know, or last corner. Is it oh one of those ones where you could do like a simple little knock a header to get it away, but he's then stretching it back and then boom. Bro, Kenny, <laughs> it's not even that. It's the wrestle. So you you, have, you know you have to wrestle before you yeah, head it. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. They are literally like dead legs, like knee in the side yeah. of your legs. You're thinking, bro, like, bro, chill, man. Chill, man. <laughs> Game tomorrow. <laughs> Game tomorrow. <laughs> well, you got to oh, watch me play man. tomorrow, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, but, but no, serious. But, Oh, go yeah. on, Kenji. No, nah, go on, John. Go on, John. I said no, 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 no. So I was thinking after the game. So when we was all in the huddle, watch like taking a penalty, I was thinking, how how will I react? Will we all run off? Will I go down? Like uh, give thanks? Will I go to the, the, my te- like the opposition and and shake their hand? And I, you have to learn. Like also, like you said, KJ, part of glorifying God is being gracious in victory and defeat, mm-hmm. um, and loving. Like, like come on, what does the Bible say? Like, love others as you desire to be loved. Like it's that's the golden rule, right? So. Confidence is important, arrogance and and pride that can't be found in Christians. So like there has to be honor. But in the midst of that that celebration, bro, like it was it was pandemonium. Yeah. And I didn't even think about my teammates, you know, um, opposition. I, I didn't think about them. I, I didn't even look at them. I don't know where they were, and I didn't even get a chance to see them. I think their manager or assistant manager came in. Kieran Dyer came in after and congratulated us in the mm-hmm. in the changing room, which is which is, which, which spoke volumes, you know. But yeah. There has to be that that respect, like like uh, like Kenji said for sure. No, I hear that. I hear that. Um, occasionally, hold that to a player who may have been chatting the entire game in your ear, and you win. You might have to say, "Hold that to them." But other than that, it all is. You know, it is. No, it's funny because we fans. I'm joking about that because we fans. It's like because we're not actually on the pitch doing it. You don't really have that kind of respect barrier when your team mm. wins and when your team loses. So like. I'll uh, say you Man United lose, we just get like I'll just get like a load of people in like, yo, KJ, hold that, bro. All your team's rubbish. Da, 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 da. And there's no kind of yeah. you don't have you don't have that with fandom. Uh, so yeah, like hearing you guys like being conscious of that, like it's good. Maybe the the fan base can can learn from you guys because boy, the way that the way that I can get grilled just because my team lost. And sometimes I'm sitting there like, bro, I didn't even play. You know yeah, but that's, but, but, but that's that, that is the exact reason. And you see it more in combat sports. There can be a lot of trash talk before a fight in boxing where they literally, there's bad mm-hmm. blood between two fighters. But once you've shared 10, 11, 12 rounds with someone mm-hmm. and you've literally put your heart, soul, training camp, family, you've, mm-hmm. you know, you've literally sacrificed everything to, to, to compete against this man. He's done the same. There is that mutual respect. Even if you don't like the opposition, that. Yeah. There is that that mutual respect. I guess it's a little bit different because it's in football because it's a team sport, but still, yeah. as believers for sure, there should be honor in defeat and, and victory. 
And actually, how often do you see a Christian post after a loss and say, I just want to give God all the glory for this loss? <laughs> you don't see it. Do you know, do you know what I mean, Yo, Ken, Ken, Kenji? You true. don't see it. Fans will go mad because they'd be like, what? Well, say, we would not want that. <laughs> Glory but, to like, you. <laughs> but we don't, do you see what, like even that's crept into culture in, 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 in yeah. ballers and God or footballers where when we've done well, we're quick to give God the glory. But in defeat, yeah. you won't often wow. see that. And I've seen some yeah. players and ballers, God, they post, I'm like, yeah, bro, like, well done. Like in all things, wow. whether we win or lose, like I'm grateful for this opportunity to play football and I give God the glory. So yes. Yes. in victory and defeat, man. Mm. Nah, man, I've been, I've enjoyed this talk. We're gonna wrap it up in a second, um, guys. Talking about victory, how how footballers handle it, how how should we go about it? Um, and yeah, just really, really powerful stuff. I hope, I hope these things are, 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 are sitting on your heart and you take it and you take it forward in your in your lives, people. Remember to, you know what it is. Remember to like the the video, download it on Spotify, subscribe to the Ballers and God YouTube channel, go over to the uh, Instagram page, follow that. Uh, also, three sixteen clothing. Go to that. Uh, go to the, that Instagram page. If you want to look fresh, you want to look fly, like John and Kenji here. Oh, that is the place. That is the place to get your clothes, guys. So come on, you know, uh, support and uh, go over to three sixteen clothing and uh, get all the fresh garments. You know what I'm saying? I, I say it before and I say it again. Young men, if you're looking for a wife, you need to look fly. So here, here's the place to get that. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Now. Um, before we leave, before we leave, listen, John, <clears throat> we have a, we have a discussion to have because, um, you are, I was sitting there when, when your keeper did those two mad saves, shout out to him as well, because those two saves were mad, such as the second one with his feet. Crazy. I was like, this is lined up for John. I didn't know you was going to take the fourth pen. And then you came, so you walked up, and I'm filming. I'm like, John, this is you. Oh, you, John, this is the time. Let's go. And then I see the ball launch into the air. I'm like, he's done the Penenka. And then he hits the crossbar. And the way I was just like, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, felt, I felt it in that moment, man. And, um, so yeah, I know I know this is probably one of the things that most people are talking about. Um, that's what we have to remember. The free kick was glorious, uh, by the way. Uh, the free kick was beautiful. What what happened, John? What what happened? I thought it was a crossbar challenge, bro. Honestly, I thought it was a crossbar <laughs> challenge. <laughs> no, I always said to myself, like, if I get a pen in a high pressure moment, it's getting dinked. Mm. It's getting dinked, and the keeper's diving, and I'm going to wheel away like Pirlo, and we're going to sail away into the sunset. And you know what? I, I have, I've, I've taken, I think, nine or ten pens in my career, and I've dinked six or seven of them, mm -hmm. and they've all gone in. And even in when I was playing in Belgium, that's when I started dinking them. And um, the press couldn't believe it. I kept dinking it. And so they, they did articles calling me Jonenka instead of Panenka. <laughs> and um, they even, you know, do you know, do you know what, who Panenka is? I bet you guys don't even know who Panenka is, do you? Panenka okay. was an old, an old, yeah, an old player, and he did a famous uh, chip, and so they called the chip Panenka. Mm -hmm. And so, because I kept dinking it in uh, in Belgium, one journalist went over to I think Romania, I'm not sure where the Czech Republic, and they interviewed Panenka and said, "What do you think about John Bosok's penalties? Can you believe that?" Oh my! And he wow. said, "Yeah." They, they said that he said, "I can't believe he's done it four times in a season." Like fair play to him. And so, like I've got a history with Panenka. It's not just a one off. Like I've got a history there. And I always said, if I get a pen in a high pressure situation, it's getting dinked. Um, and we did the practice penalty shootout in training the week before, and we didn't lean up to the game. And I put one left, one right, and I dinked the other one. And all three went, all three went in. And so all my teammates knew if John gets a pen, he's dinking it. So then I put the ball down. I was like, Lord, you have literally set me up here to take us to League Two. This is this is it. And I put the ball down, took a deep breath. I'm thinking, you're getting dinked. <laughs> and then, so I dinked it getting dinked. and I'm, I take the first two steps to wheel away and celebrate and if you look from a camera angle where, where my teammates are all in the huddle they run forward as well like he's dinked it yeah and then I just see I hit the Denver bar and I'm like oh I hit the Denver I can't believe it and I put my I, I put my Denver. shirt I put my shirt over my head and my keeper and you know what 
this guy, he's lit. He's a young player on loan he's from Norwich, serious. but he's got a big future. So he said, I, I had my, my head up, my, my shirt over my head like this because I just, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I don't, I don't miss pens. I, I don't miss pens. And he pulled the shirt down and went, Bozzy, I love the, I love the fact that you dinked it. Don't worry, I've got you. And I was wow. like, and then I started, I ran back with a smile on my face. We could like, Lord, like you really do yeah. pick them, don't you, Lord? You really do. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? The day before I said, God, can you get the glory? Yeah? And what I missed the pen, the guy who scored after me, Kedwin Scott, he missed a penalty against Wrexham, Ben Foster, the 96 minute save, which went viral. And he got not really low, but that really affected him and impacted him. And I remember I said to him after the game, I said, bro, keep your head up. Because you could, you could, um, you could score the winner um, at Wembley. Now you know the Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. I blessed him. Wow. <laughs> I probably cursed myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know Little did God know, to give him that moment, something must be sacrificed. Someone had to be sacrificed. Oh my gosh! And so, honestly, when I missed it, and even in the celebrations, oh. it was a little bit tainted because I missed the yeah. pen at Wembley, and I just don't miss pens. Um, but we went up, we celebrated, and in all of that, I remember John. It's not about you, you know. Like John, the, John said in yes. uh, in uh, what's the verse? John three thirty said, "I must, but he must become greater, and I must become less." So although there was yes. celebration and people said you're a man of the match and praising me, that there was like a little reminder, Lord, it's not about me again. It's about you. About so me. yeah, th listen, keepers beware, because next year you're gonna get dinked again. But <laughs> until then, I have to just lay low. You know, five inches yeah. lower, I would have been okay. Nah, you know what it is, yeah? Wow. It would have been so, I'm not going to lie, it would have been so lit. I would have been here for it. A Penenka <laughs> to finish off the game after a free kick as well. Oi, no one was chatting to me. I'm not even a Notts County fan, but I would be one for that moment <laughs> and, and chat to people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, nah, you know what? And and it just shows thing, things happen. You know what I mean? But things happen for a reason. Um, your 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 teammate getting get in the moment that to redeem... He will probably think he's redeemed himself now. Um, so yeah, like yeah, like so it it's all it's all for your good at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Everything happens. I loved reason. I loved it as well, man. I loved it, John, because it just showed courage. It showed character. It showed it showed like the fearlessness. Like it just showed that this isn't. It, it's it, it's so much bigger, bro. It's so much bigger. And even though I was watching it and thinking, no way, I couldn't believe it. But like, I actually couldn't believe it. I was I was shocked. I stood still. I said, nah, what? But then when they scored, I was so like, I was... yeah. I couldn't watch the last pen. I didn't watch the last pen. Couldn't watch it. Couldn't watch it. Wow, man. The game of football, wow. the most it's so beautiful, but yet so cruel at the same time. Ah. The highs and lows, yeah, yeah, for sure. But guys, um, this has been an excellent team talk. Uh, more coming uh in, in the coming weeks. Don't be don't worry about that, people. Thank you for listening. Uh, John, Kenji, it's always a pleasure. I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful week. Remember to subscribe. Remember to follow the Boys and God Play page and the 316 Clothing Line page. Um, and until next time, stay blessed. Thank you. Peace. God bless. Peace.